Hi everyone, my name is Rivka Rosenberg. People call me Rivki. Today I will teach you, eighth graders, a very interesting lesson about street art. Are you ready? Let's begin. Can you learn about another kind of art? Can you learn about the messages street art tries to teach you? Can you study about the order of adjectives? You will be able to do so by the end of this lesson. Where can we see these paintings? Look at these two pictures I put here. Where can we see them? This, of course, is at the, a museum. And this looks like on a street. It's a painting on a street. You see the girl with the balloon? And this, these are paintings in a museum. Have you been to an art museum? I love going to an art museum. I've been to art museums all over the world. So these are paintings. One can, this can be find, found on a, on a street and other paintings like this can be found in museums. Where are these paintings, do you know? These are examples of street art. They're, it's art done on street, on different uh, buildings like this or this. These are actually uh, in Bethlehem. It's very interesting. And here it says graffiti is a crime. It's, it's uh, funny. It's a sense of, it has a sense of humor. Graffiti is another word for street art. And it's not a crime. Sometimes, depending on what building you draw, but here it's making fun of graffiti. Sometimes it's a crime, pesha, to draw on someone's building, but sometimes it's not. Look at this picture. Very interesting, the girl with the balloon. What do you think when you see this painting? If you go to Bethlehem, you can see these paintings. New vocabulary words for today. The first word is art. Today we will talk about very interesting art called street art or graffiti. Some people call it graffiti. Stations, train stations, bus stations, appears. Suddenly, when you look out the window, maybe a painting can appear. Someone can draw it and the next night you can see it appears. Homeless. Homeless are people without homes. When you add L-E-S-S -S to a word, sometimes it becomes uh, the negative. So home is someone who has a home. Homeless, someone who does not have a home. Zones, ezorim in Hebrew. Wall, every house has walls. Teenager, I think you are a teenager, eighth graders. Colorful. Many street art paintings are very colorful. They use many, many colors. Certain, mesuyamim, exhibitions. There are many exhibitions at art museums. When you go visit, for example, an, exhi an exhibition about uh, comics, could be in an art museum, an exhibition about, uh, depending on the museum, maybe there is an exhibition about cars in different museums. Tourist. I love being a tourist in different kinds of different places in the world, different countries. Famous. Street art, some of the street art paintings are very, very famous. We will see a few. So let me go over the words again. Art, stations, appears, homeless, zones, wall, teenager, colorful, certain, exhibitions, tourists, and famous. These are the words for you to know. Let's try and match these pictures to, their, to the words below. For example, let's see if you, we can do together, we can do number one, zones. Which picture here represents zones, different places in a city? Of course, D. So you, you can write in your notebook, one D. Try to do this and I will be back very soon.
let's try to do this together. So as I said, zones is here. These are zones in a city. How about art? Well, these two are art, this one and this one. But the art I meant here, probably a little bit uh, tricky, is the art on the bus. So A, 2A, the art on the bus. That's street art also. Colorful. This is what I meant for colorful. But actually, the bus is also very colorful. But this picture is very, very colorful. So 3B and appears. You see the eye appears in the blue area? So this is appears, mofia. So we have zones, art, colorful, and appears. What is street art? Would you like to know? Look at these two pictures that I put here of street art. This is of a woman opening her eyes, and this is of a man actually painting street art. So what is street art? Street art is large paintings in public places. It's not in a museum, which is a private place. It's outside in a public place. It could be in parks, wherever there is a wall, or stations, or in a public place. Patuach la kahal. For example, could be usually on walls around the world, train stations. Many, wherever, wherever you see uh, street art, it's probably an artist who drew it, like this person here. In Tel Aviv, there are many, many places you can see street art. We will see that soon. So it's art done in public places. It's outside. It's not inside. It's always outside. It is art without words, but that teaches us a lesson. Let's look at this woman here. What, do, what does the artist want to teach us? I think he wants to teach us to open our eyes and to look around us. That's his way, the artist's way of telling us, open your eyes and look around you. Don't look down. Look up and look around. This, I think when I look at this, this is what I think. So three things um, about street art. First of all, it's in public places. It's usually on walls, on train stations, sometimes on buses, as we saw here. You see here? It's on a bus on the old bus, and it is art without words that tries to teach you and I a lesson, everyone a lesson. Let's look at examples of street art around the world. Look at these six words in capital letters, and let us try to find their meaning together, okay? We will see six examples of street art. Number one, this is in the UK, in the United Kingdom, in England. In Bristol, in the UK, there is a street art festival, festival, in August, every year. So what can we put instead of the word art here? Let's look here. Festival with many people and colorful painting. Pictures, poems, or songs made by using creativity and imagination. Text or story with cre creative ideas written using imagination or large pictures made with colors and without words. Do you remember street art? Large paintings with no words. So this is the answer. In Bristol, in the United Kingdom, there is art, street art, in August every year. This is the example, number one. Now let's look at number two. Artists paint big, colorful pictures of people on building. You see this? These are two people here. So instead of the word colorful, what can you write? Very big, full of color, or without color? Of course, street art is colorful. It's full of color. All of these street arts are very, very colorful. Number three, we are now going to Taiwan. In Taiwan, there are graffiti zones. There are areas. You remember the word zone from the beginning? So in Taiwan, there are graffiti zones, street art places where artists can paint on walls. See this man here? He's painting on the wall. So instead of zones, what can we say? Walls, museums, areas, or parks. What do you think? Areas, of course. Now, let's look at this. Some tourists visit Sao Paulo. This is in Brazil just to see street art. They travel all the way to Brazil just to see street art. 
So what can we say instead of tourists here? People who love to see art, people who travel to a place for fun, or people who paint on walls and stations. Of course, tourists are people who travel to a place for fun. This is street art in Brazil. Two more. Number five, in some countries, artists can draw and paint in certain places, not in all places. What does it mean, certain places? Any person or place or thing that is there, or a place or thing that is empty. A place or thing that is empty, of course. So you see here, it, the street art is drawn, is painted on the ground, on the floor. And the last one, it appears, the street art, on buses, walls, and, and around the world. So what do, does the word appear mean? Is it danced, was seen, disappeared, or to be seen? Of course, to be seen on trains, buses, walls, that is street art in public places. Now, look at these two paintings here, street art. Subjects of street art. What is the subject of the street art? What does the painter want to tell us? Who are the people in the street art here? What does the art mean? Look at this painting here. This is a street art. Looks like real, but it's not. It's a painting on the wall. It says, save me. And here, this is a person and a mouse or a rat jumping out. Of course, this is, these are paintings of homeless people. Homeless, people with no home. You remember the less? If you add less, it becomes negative. So homeless. Homeless. So one of the subjects for street art is homeless people. What, what do you think the artist want to say, what, wants to say here? What does the art mean? It means for people to walk on the street, don't just look at the homeless people like that and just pass by. Think about them. Maybe give them charity, give them a little bit of money, it's daka. Think about them. Maybe there is a way you can help a person like that on the street. So this is a very interesting way for the artist to say, instead of saying, telling you, hey, you, look at the homeless person on the street. He just paints a picture of a homeless person, and it makes you think. Sometimes it's even stronger than telling you what to do when you, it makes you think of what to do. Here is an exercise for you to do in your notebook. Please answer these, this question in two sentences. One question, two sentences as the answer. What message do the street artists who paint homeless want to give? It's exactly what I just said before. I hope you listened. Let me repeat again the question. What message do the street artists who paint homeless people want to give. You see this, these two homeless people? One is on a bench and one is holding their dog. Do this activity and I'll be back very soon.
I'm very curious to know what you wrote about these two uh, street art paintings. What message do these st street artists who paint homeless people want to give? Actually, I don't know if you, uh, if you can read this, but this says here, do not disturb. So the, paint, the artist, the street artist, he drew this homeless person and he wrote, do not disturb. And here you have a homeless person with his dog. I think the artist wanted us to think about when we walk, of course, these, um, this art is on the street. So when we walk in the street, the artist wanted to, us to think how we can help the homeless people, either not disturbing them, not talking to them, or helping them with a little bit of charity, maybe tzedakah, or in different ways. The story of street art. Street art began in big cities in the United States in the 1970s. In New York, young people wrote their names or tags. They call them tag on street art. For example, let's see if we can see it here. We can't, but um, you can't see it, but normally you can see the tags. In New York, young people wrote their names or tags in pen on walls around the city. So they drew uh, a painting, and then they wrote on the side their name, and that's called a tag. So it started in New York in the 1970s. One of the first street artists was a teenager called Demetrius. And here, this is Demetrius today. He's a little older. His tag was called Taki183. This is his name where, when he signed. You see, you can, can't see it very well, but that's his signature on, on his street art. He signed his name as Taki183. He wrote his tags, or he drew, on walls all over New York. You can still see it today. So this is the, one of the first street artists. His name is Demetrius. Other teenagers saw Demetrius' tag and started painting too. Soon, there were street artists on walls, buses, and trains all over New York. New York has many, many places for street art. It's very, very famous for that. As I said, street art can also be called graffiti. These are some street arts around the world, street artists. Some street artists have become very famous, Mefur Samim. Here are three stars of the street art world. Os Gimios, I hope I'm saying this name correctly, are twin brothers from Sao Paulo. Where is Sao Paulo? Brazil, of course. Look what they drew, beautiful. They paint big, colorful paint pictures of people on buildings. So if you go to Brazil, you can visit, you can see th this street art by Os and Grimios. These are twin brothers, Teomim. If you go to France, there is Black le Rat. Black is a name, Rat is a rat in, in French. He is from Paris, and you see his tag here, it says Black, and this is what he draw, paints, street art. This is in Paris. He is famous for painting pictures of homeless people in big cities. So this represents the homeless people, of course, that usually when they live on the street, they live with the rats, unfortunately. Here we are in South Africa. Faith 47, this is the name of the tag of the person, is from Cape Town in South Africa. She, it's a, it's a girl, she paints big, colorful pictures. You see these zebras? Beautiful paintings. So she paints colorful pictures of people and animals. This is in South Africa. She likes painting in different places, and you can find her work on buses and, of course, on walls in South Africa. So we went from Sao Paulo in Brazil to Paris in France to Cape Town in South Africa. Do you think graffiti or street art should be allowed in cities? allowed? Do they make a city look bad or beautiful? What do you think? Ah, there are two opinions here. Street art makes cities look beautiful because it's very colorful, or street art makes cities look bad because it's not, some people don't like it. These are two opinions about street art. 
We will do this activity after we come back, after the break. I hope you enjoy the break.
Welcome back. Before the break, we talked about street art. We traveled to Sao Paulo in Brazil. Then we saw street art in Paris and France. And after that, we saw street art in Cape Town in South Africa. Then I asked you a question to think about it. Do you think that street art should be allowed in cities? They should agree, the authorities should allow it, Le Harshot, to do street art in cities? Do they make the city look beautiful or do they make it look ugly? So some people think street art makes cities look beautiful because they are big, they're colorful, they're very smart sometimes. And other people think that street art makes cities look bad because they're not Sometimes they are graffiti, they're not so nice. Think about it, what you think. Let's complete these sentences with the words below. The words we have are famous, beautiful, and places. Take two, three minutes and try to do this, and when you come back, we will review your answers. Let's see what you wrote. Number one, street art can be about politics, politica, or just make a city beautiful. So I would write here, first of all, I'd write here A, B, and C, and here I would write B. Here there was a mistake, so I took off the A. Number two, street art is blank in some countries, is famous in some countries. Some people travel all the way to different countries to, um, to look at this street art. And three, in other countries, artists can only paint in certain places. Some places, they're not allowed to paint wherever they want in public places, only where it is allowed. Let's watch a short video right now about street art in New York. enjoy seeing street art in New York? It's beautiful. If you type in Google street art New York, you can see many, many more paintings like this. Let's review the vocabulary that we learned earlier. Art, omanut, stations, train station, bus station. Street art is often painted on train stations outside in the public on the walls. Appears, homeless, we talked about that some artists draw street art about homeless. That's their theme, drawing homeless people, to make us think about the homeless. Zones. Some cities, you have zones of street art, or you have zones where it is not allowed. Wall. Teenager. Colorful. Street art is very colorful. Certain. Exhibitions. Tourist. Sometimes when I travel to a different country, I'm considered a tourist and famous. We saw famous artists today, famous street artists. Let's do this activity. Choose one example of street art, either this one or this one here, the girl with the colorful hair or the 
or the kid um, swinging, choose one example of street art and describe it. Say what you see in the painting, what you think the artist is trying to teach you. And try to use at least two of the new words. The words I put here are big, colorful, appears, interesting, and famous. Big, colorful, appears, interesting, and famous. So choose one painting, describe it, and try to use at least two of the words that we learned today. I'll be back very soon. Hi again. Which painting did you choose? I love these two paintings. This one is of a boy or girl swinging and it shows freedom, liberty, fun. And this one is of a girl and with very colorful hair to show maybe she has a colorful childhood or a colorful life. She has lots of fun and maybe she has lots of thoughts. She arbe machshavot. Well, how did you describe these? Did you use the word big, colorful? These are very colorful. This especially is a very colorful painting. Appears. Where does this appear? This appears on a corner building. Interesting. They are both very interesting. And they're quite famous too. Let's continue. Now we will talk about Israeli street art. Street art in Israel and the order of adjectives. The order of adjectives. How do we put them in order? So the first number one is called a determiner. A, N, the, many, some, my, your. This is a determiner. Number two, opinion. Good, bad, great, beautiful. That's an opinion. Size. Big, large, tiny, tall, or long. That's size. Shape. I'm sure you know the shapes, round, square, age is number five, young or old, and color is last. So here is an example. Many street art paintings, many of course is the determiners, number one. Many street art paintings are beautiful, this is number two, large, number three, round, number four, and modern. And colorful, this is six. This is how you put the adjectives in order. Now, how are you going to remember this? What I always do is I take the first letters of every word. So I have here D, O, S, S, from here, A, and then C. So we can say, dos, sac. 
this is a clue on how to remember the orders of the, uh, of the adjective. That's how I remember things. I, took the, I take the first letters of each word. So for here, in this case, it doesn't mean anything, dos sac, just a clue on how to remember the order of the adjectives. So D, determiner, O, opinion, S, size, another S for shape, age, and C for color, dos sac. So let me repeat again. The first is a determiner, a and the many, some, my, or your, for example. Opinion, good, bad, great, size, big, large, tiny, huge, long, this is size. Shape, of course, you know, round, square, triangle. Age, young, old, modern, color, brown, yellow, purple, these are the colors. And the clue to remembering this for you is dos sac. This can help you in many things. If it, you can always take the first letters of uh, words and create a word and help you, helps you remember. Let's practice. Put the adjectives in the correct order here to complete the sentence. So what do we have here? Colorful, interesting, and big. So let's go back. Where does colorful go? That's the last, right? So we can go here and say three. Where does interesting go? Interesting is an opinion. So we put here two. And what about big? Which one is that? Big, large, that's size. So that's, um, so this is three and this is two. So, uh, sorry, this is one. Because another clue is the word N. So N, interesting, um, big, colorful painting, is on the wall of a building in Jaffa. Again, this is the clue, first of all, is the N. It has to be with a vowel. N, interesting, big, colorful painting, is on the wall of a building in Jaffa. And this is in Jaffa, in Yafo. Let's do another one. Put the adjective also in the correct um, sentence. We have painted, white, and powerful. So what can we say here? A, blank, 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 dove sends a message. A, painted, of course, powerful, white is the last, dove sends a message. And this is a dove by Bensky in Bethlehem. Let's try another one. The blank, blank, blank painting decorates a door in the market. This is in the market. I think it's in the uh, Jerusalem market in Machane Yehuda. So let's look at the sentence. The blank, blank, blank painting decorates a door in the market. Jerusalem, blue and red, huge. Think about it. I'll come back in a few minutes. Think where to put these words. Let's go back and see. Where do we put Jerusalem, blue and red, and huge? So according to this, Jerusalem is the first one. The Jerusalem, blue and red is uh, a color, and the word is huge. Which one is huge? Huge is size. So size bef goes before um, the, the color. So the Jerusalem is A. Size, huge. The Jerusalem, huge, blue and red painting decorates a door in the market. Let's try this one. Put the adjective in the correct 
word in the correct sentence again. N, this is your clue, blank, 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 creature marks Shushan Street. I think it's in Jerusalem. We have painted, orange, large, and original. Try this and I'll be back soon. Let's do this together. So the clue is N, so it has to be a vowel. So N original, orange, large, painted, creature marks Shushan Street. Now let's do an art activity. If you don't have time to complete this, we can do this, you can do this at uh, the end of this lesson. Draw street art on paper. Write two sentences describing your street art using the vocabulary you have learned today and the order of the adjectives. Please answer what message do you want to give to your street art? You can take a picture of this slide and if you don't complete it right now, we can do it at the end of the lesson. Draw street art, write the message of your street art and describe it using the vocabulary and the order of the adjectives. Let's just review the order of the um, vocabulary again. Art, stations, appears, homeless, zones, wall, teenager, colorful, certain, exhibition, tourist, and famous. And the order of the adjectives is dos sac, remember, determiner, a, N, etc., opinion, size, shape, age, and color. So I'll put this here for a few minutes and I will be back. Don't worry if you don't finish it, you can do it after the end of the lesson. Hi again. I hope you had a chance to start your street art. Take a picture of the slide and you can do it at the end of this lesson. Don't forget to not only draw your street art, but to write two sentences describing it and using the vocabulary from today and answering what message do you want to give uh, with your street art and share your work with your friends, family, and teacher. Now, at the end of this lesson, you can know about another kind of art, street art. You can know about the messages street art tries to teach us. We learned about uh, homeless street art, street art about homeless people. And I, we briefly talked about the order of the adjectives. Thank you very much for watching my lesson today about street art. My name is Rivka Rosenberg, and I will see you soon.